you have seen some of my other videos, you already know that I believe that if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And the same goes for the position of the screws when you tie in the cabinets. If you plan it right, it is actually possible to hide most of the screws that you put in the side of the cabinet when you tie them in. As you can see in this picture, the screws will be hidden uh, behind the hinge for the door. And that means if you put it right there in between and you add the hinge afterwards, there's no way that you can see the screw when the cabinet is fully assembled. And this, of course, is also the case if you're putting in screws for the panels, you can put them behind the hinges as well. Another option is to put the screws behind the shelves if you know where the shelves goes. And uh, with a bit of experience, you know that the shelf in a 40 inch upper wall cabinet would be in hole number 8, 16 and 24. So with that knowledge in mind, you know exactly where you can put the screws to either tie the cabinets together or for putting on the end panel. And the same actually goes for when you're putting in the fillers. The screw just have to be in a different position. It is sitting there behind the hinge, or you can put it behind a shelf, just as when we put on the panel or tie in the cabinets. So if it's a filler at the end of a line of cabinets, you can put the screw where the hinge is, or you can put the screw under the shelf. Tip number 17 is actually not a tip. It's uh, in a way more me telling you, don't do as you see in the picture. If your rail is not long enough, for instance, if you need 90 inches of rail, don't add another six inches of rail to the rail that is 84 inches from delivery. We really don't want to do that because as you remember that the cabinets that are being hung on that rail will actually hang at the end of the rail. So if you put in a short piece, as you see in the picture, it is bound to go wrong because both screws cannot sit in a start and at best you will have a screw in one start and it's not it's not great it might fall down so don't do that instead of adding a short piece when the rail is too short you want to cut it in two and stretch it on your wall i have made a video explaining how this works and if you click up in the corner you can see that video I don't know if you noticed in the previous tip that that piece of rail was actually secured into uh, the wall with the wrong type of screws. You do not want to use those uh, with a conical head because uh, that's not what IKEA recommend. IKEA recommend a screw with a big pan head, just like the one you see in the picture there. And um, it is important, of course, that you use the right screw, otherwise you might be so unlucky that your cabinets will fall down and that's not really cool. And if you like to see how bad it can actually go with the wrong screws, I have a short video uh, showing that as well. Check it out by clicking up in the corner. This tip is for you if you're wondering whether to put in your floors before or after the kitchen has been installed. Basically, you can always install any floor after the kitchen has been installed. But as I said previously, you want to do it right. So if you have any doubt whether to put in the floor before or after the kitchen, I suggest that you take a look at the uh, video I made and there's a link for it up in the right hand corner. The last tip in part four is a uh, suggestion for you how you can make a cabinet for cutting boards. The cabinet you see in the picture is actually the nine inch wide and 40 inch high wine rack that has been cut to fit. And um, then you can uh, hang it up there, as you can see in this case, next to the vent hood. And uh, I think it actually looked really well because it matched the kitchen and it has a panel on the side. 